Proclaiming Christ, victor over sin and death. You're listening to Ancient Faith Radio, your Orthodox Internet radio connection. Welcome to Live with the Lowe's with your hosts, Father Nicholas and Dr. Roxanne Lowe, where we will connect our Orthodox faith to -to day-to-day living and relationships to our family, our work, and our view of ourselves. Father Nicholas is the priest at St. John the Divine Greek Orthodox Church in Jacksonville, and Dr. Roxanne is a licensed clinical psychologist who uses her extensive training in private practice. Questions are welcome by calling 855-237-2346. That's 855-237-2346. Here now is Father Nicholas and Dr. Roxanne. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Live with the Lowe's. It's such a pleasure to have you here with us on this Tuesday, September 26. Thank you for joining us this evening. If you're new to Live with the Lowe's, it's a show that merges both faith and and psychology to give you some guiding principles that you can apply in your walk of life. So again, thanks so much for being with us. I do want to encourage you, as I do every single Tuesday, to, you know, just stay connected to us on our social media platforms. You know, friends, we are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, all under the headings of The Lowe's. And that last name is spelled L-O-U-H-S. It's The Lowe's. In fact, all of our sermons are archived on our Lowe's um, YouTube channel. So just go to youtube.com and just put in the search engine, put the Lowe's, and you'll have access to all of our sermons. Roxanne and I collaborate oftentimes on our sermons, again, trying to give you that practical Christianity message. And also, friends, we do encourage you that if you're in the need of or would like our daily inspirational messages, these are messages that we send out every single day in your email inbox, we encourage you to go to our website at thelowes.com, that's L-O-U-H-S.com, click on that subscribe button. And all you have to do is simply put in your email address and every morning you'll receive one of our daily inspirational messages. And if you're already receiving them, that's great. We'd love that you're receiving them, but do us a favor, help us to share Christ's light, help us to make a difference in this world, share them with your friends and family and invite them as well to join and receiving those messages. Friends, I also want to invite you all to take advantage of calling in, especially on tonight's show. It's a topic that I think all of us at some point can relate with. And you can call in at 1-855-237-2346. That's 1-855-237-2346. Or email me a question during the live broadcast of our show by emailing me at ask at ancientfaith.com. That's A-S-K at ancientfaith.com. So let's get started. You know, friends, all of us at times in our life are going to go through a dark season in our life. And I hate to say that. I hate... People may say to me, um, Father Nick, can you get a little bit more positive? Um, Well, I'm positive that at times in our life, we're going to experience dark seasons in our life. Perhaps as you're listening to us tonight, you two could be struggling in your marriage. Maybe you're worried about a child that you see them going off, off track. Maybe you've just experienced a loss of someone that you loved so much unexpectedly. Or maybe you were recently diagnosed with a a cancer or a disease that you're truly trying to get your hand and your head around. All of us can experience this, and so often when we experience these uh, seasons of darkness, we don't know how to deal with them because it impacts us on a number of levels. Not only does it impact us with the knowledge that we're receiving or hearing, but it impacts us psychologically, it impacts us spiritually. For many people during these difficult dark seasons, they can ask the question, why God? Why am I going through this? It can impact you also emotionally. For many people during these difficult dark seasons, they can find themselves withdrawing themselves, even going into uh, despondency and depression. Listen for a moment to what St. Isaac the Syrian, what he shares about this, what he speaks about this darkness that we can experience. He writes this, Not all of the struggles wage war by means of assault. In other words, not, not everything that we think that comes against us attacks us the same way. For there are struggles that only cause the soul affliction. Listlessness, darkness, grief do not attack by all the same assault. Rather, they simply lay a weight that gets heavier and heavier each day upon the soul. Maybe for some of you, as you're hearing us tonight, maybe you feel that weight on your soul. 
Or maybe you know someone that feels that weight on their soul getting heavier each and every day. How do we address that? How do we get ourselves as best as we can with Christ's help through those dark seasons of life? Well, tonight I've invited a very dear friend of mine, in fact, a classmate of mine from the, my days at the seminary, who's a therapist and someone that has given a lot of work and time and actually written a great deal on healing, healing during the dark seasons of life. His name is Father Joshua McCool, and let me just tell you a little bit about him. He's the author of Healing Your Wounded Soul, Growing from Pain to Peace. It was published back in 2020, and Ancient Faith was actually the publisher of that, so you can find out more information by going to store.ancientfaith.com. He has served as the Dean of St. George Cathedral in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania since 2012. He worked in the counseling field for 16 years, received two years of training in family therapy at the Philadelphia Child Guidance Center, and completed a one-year certificate course in cognitive behavioral therapy at the Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine. He also maintains on Ancient Faith a blog called A Healing Driven Life, and he also has an Ancient Faith podcast that's called Healing the Unresolved, Putting the Past in the Past. He also received his master's degree in counseling psychology from Chestnut Hill College in Philadelphia and his master's of divinity from Holy Cross Seminary. That's in fact, that's where we met. He's a licensed in the state of Pennsylvania for counseling and Father Joshua, as always, brother, it's so good to see you, and welcome to Live no. with the Lowe's. No, thank you for having me on. It's it's uh, my privilege. So, Thank you, brother. Thanks so much for taking the time to be with us. And really, I, I thought, you know, what I would ask you first of all, Father Joshua, is that, you know, for so many people, um, they want to be healed. We want to be healed, um, obviously, through our own personal struggles, our persistent sins, as the scriptures talk about them, but also healing physically, emotionally. Why was this topic of healing so really an anchor within your own ministry where you've written now two books, Healing Your Wounded Soul and then Healing Work, grow, um, Giving Humanity a Second Chance? Why, were, why was healing such a prominent message that you wanted to get across to everyone? Um, certainly, I think if I had to, the, the moment that pops into my head first is when uh, it was after seminary. And uh, of course, you, as you recall, I was one of the seminarians who was in the unenviable position of you graduate from seminary and you're single. So you got, mm -hmm. you got to have time to kill, you know, because <laughs> you got to eventually get married and so forth. So right. I uh, uh, decided to do some gra graduate school in psychology. And so as I was going into the program, the advisor of the program asked me, so, you know, what do you want to get out of this? What's making you want to do this, you know, after seminary? And so I quoted, uh, it was... Uh, Chapter one from Second Corinthians, I think it's like verse three and four, where uh, St. Paul says, makes reference to the uh, God of comfort, who mm -hmm. comforts, comforts us in all our, our sorrow or distress, so that we in turn may comfort others with the same mm -hmm. comfort with which we receive from him. And so certainly uh, that, that certainly applied uh, to me, you know, having done mm -hmm. uh, my own healing work uh, over the years. And I saw just how powerful it can be and really got to experience uh, the connection between, you know, unresolved uh, grief or loss or emotional hurts and how it can hinder our spiritual growth. Having done the healing work myself and having experienced just the, the benefits that unleashes on our spiritual life, mm. um, it very much created a conviction in me to want to share that uh, with others. You know, that's because after all, I mean, as, as, as Orthodox Christians, we're all on that path of theosis of deification mm -hmm. you know striving mm -hmm. to become like god through grace you know and uh, uh and then also having studied within the field of psychology having worked in the secular field uh, you know starting off doing the agency work and then in the last several years uh before being a full-time priest uh doing full-time outpatient counseling i really got to experience uh many of the beneficial discoveries mm -hmm. of psychology that really blend well with our faith, with our orthodox spirituality. And boy, when you combine the two together, it can really accelerate uh, spiritual growth. Mm. So it was just something, uh, you know, just over time, I, I just felt very passionate about it and also became keenly aware that there's a lot of people out there suffering silently. You know, a lot mm. of Christians out there that their definition of carrying their cross just means, well, deny your emotions, uh, mm. suck it up, deal with it. There's always people out there that have it worse. And so it's a, a sin if I complain or if I grieve or if I 
acknowledge that what I went through was traumatic or painful. And they never got any empathy or validation or recognition of their oh, grief or suffering. Exactly. And uh, so kind of wanted to get a, a message out there uh, to say, actually, uh, there's room for this within the church. This is not something outside the church, right. the healing work. It's actually part of the ascetical life. So... Yeah, and I love what you're sharing. First of all, I love that verse from the, from the book of Corinthians. I think that, you know, all of us have been healed, obviously, through the resurrection of Christ um, and how Christ tells us that, you know, the same spirit that was uh, at Christ, that rose Christ from the dead is within all of us. But that doesn't stop the fact that we do experience trauma. We experience times in which, you know, we need to be, we need to feel the comfort of someone's touch, someone's words, someone's prayers, um, obviously the, within the church setting, the sacraments that, that come along with it. But I do think that you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, for so many people, they are suffering in silence, um, and sometimes they can get a really kind of a warped idea that that suffering um, sometimes is not only their cross, but they can think that, 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 that they should just simply suffer with it alone. And it reminds me of, you know, when Christ was on the... Um, you know, carrying the cross. I mean, even in that moment, it was he that said that that allowed you know Simon of Cyrene to come and to help him carry the cross, almost revealing the fact that we need each other in those difficult times. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yes, yes, absolutely, one hundred percent. Very beautifully said. And I, I think sometimes uh, I, I think and maybe I'm wrong on this, but uh, for many people out there, it's the disenfranchised losses mm. that they don't know how to fit into their faith. So. You know the, the the franchise losses, if you were like death, when we when you know the obvious ones, when we lose someone to death, it's a little easier for us to fit into our faith because there's room for it. It's mm. uh, there's reference, you know, to it into the in the gospels, and it's something that our society widely acknowledges as a true and genuine loss. But when we talk about a uh, when we talk about a child a childhood that was turbulent or unpredictable, mm. uh, or a parent that was uh, displayed out of control behavior or had addiction. Um, many people don't know how to put those disenfranchised losses, those losses that society mm. does not readily acknowledge as losses. Uh, they don't know how to fit them into our spiritual life. And so they often will try to, to grow in the faith, leaving all that stuff on the outside, but they don't mm. realize that we're going to have to carry that with us into the faith and, and it becomes part of our, our aesthetical life, the healing from it and so forth. Exactly. Because, you know, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but, you know, it involves a lot no. of self-denial and so forth. And, Absolutely. Uh, well, that's why I think that this show is going to be so powerful for so many of our listeners. And again, I invite all of you, um, if you've got a question for Father Joshua, if you're going through a difficult or dark season now, or you know someone who is, and you're looking for some ways to kind of just guide them or guide just some tools that can help you in your faith, we do encourage you to call us at one 855 237 2346. You can totally be anonymous if you don't feel comfortable sharing your name. Our producer will make sure that um, we recognize and respect that. Again, that number is 1-855-237-2346 or email me during our show at ask at ancientfaith.com. You know, Father Joshua, you know, how can past trauma or profound unresolved painful experiences cause us to feel disillusioned or even abandoned by God? during the more trying or difficult life experiences. I think for many people, when we go through those difficult times, as I was mentioning earlier, spiritually, they can you know, ask the question why. We tend to run away from God or blame God as opposed to running to God. So your thoughts? Yes, yes no, I think that's a, an excellent question. It's similar, uh, I think I did a podcast recently that, that spoke to this uh, topic, but you know, when we've had a uh, profoundly painful or traumatic experience, whether we started working on it right away or, or whether we kind of just suppressed it or mm -hmm. put it aside and it's dormant, <clears throat> it very much uh, leaves an imprint uh, on our brain, you know, the memory of that experience. And sometimes, uh, in, in a very well-intentioned way, we kind of convince ourselves, listen, okay, that's what happened then and that's over now. So I kind of did my time, I did my suffering. And so now kind of the rest of my life hopefully will be smooth sailing and peaceful and, and easy. Uh, because after all, I, how much I, I suffered, surely, you know, mm. that was then, this is now. We just can't bear the thought that our life could be a struggle or that there's gonna be more of that down the road. Because sometimes mm. 
a traumatic experience or, or just a, a turbulent childhood or profoundly painful experience can take so much from us. And it consumes so much of our emotional resources to hold at bay and to mm. repress. We simply don't have the energy or the bandwidth or the wherewithal to have to go through more experiences sometimes. And so we kind of can unwisely convince ourselves that um, not, not out of entitlement, uh, just, you know, we're well-intentioned. We just, I, I think that I did my time and God's going to make sure that, you know, the rest of my mm. life is smooth sailing. And then all of a mm. sudden, and maybe it is for a time, but inevitably uh, life throws us a curveball. Uh, the unexpected happens or mm. perhaps the arrival of a life stage happens and suddenly we're struggling again and we're feeling things that are eerily similar to what we experienced in that original experience. And then we're thrown for a loop. It's like suddenly we feel like the ground falls out from under us. We're like, wait a mm. minute, this, this wasn't supposed to happen again. You know, right. I thought God and I had to deal a little bit, you know, mm. uh, and, uh, um, you know, oh, no, it's, it's happening again. And, and then sometimes it can lead to, you know, feelings of, uh, did I do something wrong? Right. And, mm. and that happens to a lot of people when an unexpected trial or tribulation arises in, in our lives is, did I do something wrong? Did I, I mean, I thought I was doing everything right. I mean, I was mm. doing everything God wants me to do. And now all of a sudden I'm back in this time of suffering and struggle. And then somehow we can end up feeling that somehow God withdrew his providence from us somehow. And, mm. and of course, some might say, well, you know, but that's kind of immature thinking spiritually. And perhaps it mm -hmm. is, but we're all guilty of it in one form or another. Mm. But, um, but sometimes, um, you know, if, we, if we've had trauma in our past, especially if it was in our childhood, if we had engaged in any type of self-blame, which is very common, you know, many people that have had trauma will blame themselves in some way mm -hmm. for, the, for the trauma. And um, there's a lot of shame with it and so forth, and especially with children, because that's, that's the only way they know how to make sense of their traumatic experience. Well, we can't see mom and dad as bad or this world out of control, so it must have been me. I did something. Mm. And so late in life, when we're adults, and suddenly a difficult time brews up again in our life or a dark season, um, we can kind of fall back to that coping mechanism of believing right. that somehow, did I, you know, did I do something wrong? Is this my fault that, that, that God's not protecting me or he withdrew his mm. providence from me? But it can lead to di disillusionment because there's this profound sense of, man, like, I thought I was done with this. I mm. thought I did my time. I Almost on some level as though we earned that peaceful right. life, and, you know, Absolutely. there's all kinds of, you know, in, in retrospect, we would say, well, but that's silly, but we do it, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and. Well, and then, and I think too, just to kind of like build on what you're sharing, I think it's so easy, especially, you know, in our society that we live in now, where it's very much a consumer driven society. So we've almost, it's almost like we're dealing with God, like a consumer, like I am doing all this so that I should be getting this in return. Yeah. And, you know, it's like this idea that, um, right that earth is going to be heaven and, and earth is not heaven. Earth it will lie to us, but heaven is heaven and earth is earth. Um, yeah. But I, yeah, I mean, I yeah, think, you're right. yeah, I, I'd love control. to hear more about that. Right. Yeah. We want control. We want to believe that we can, you know, control things. We, we make up rules in our minds sometimes of how life should work. And even with exercise, you know, everything in moderation. Well, if I, if I, if I exercise so many times and I take these supplements and I eat well, well, then I should never get sick and I should live to a certain age. But it doesn't always work like that. You know, and you so know I was uh, I was at a uh, I'm so sorry not to interrupt you. Please continue. I didn't want to cut you off. No, no, no. I was done. I was done. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm sure you've had this experience many times as, as, a, as a priest. I mean, I was at a, at a hospital room uh, probably about um, two, three weeks ago with a parishioner. He was a very young, young man who was diagnosed with cancer just a few months ago. Um, and, you know, he was telling me, he said, you know, um, he got on to watching some of the, some of the televangelists on the new, on the television and, you know, how to talk about, just pray, just pray, you're going to be healed. And, and I, right when I walked into the room, we one of the most difficult experiences I've had in a long time. And I've had quite a few, but this one was really hard. Um, he just began yelling right when I walked in and just saying, why would God put me through this? Uh, and he went through this whole, you know, God love him. I mean, he went through this whole thing, you know, Father, I prayed, I believed, I, I did everything right. I wasn't, you know, I never drank, I never smoked, and yet this happened. And now I'm not going to see my daughter get married. And now I'm not going to see my, 
uh, my son get married. He was a very young man when he passed. And so, you know, I think that's, I think it's a natural thing. And it's so, so it's gut wrenching to hear, but obviously, you know, it's obviously yeah. terrible to go through as the person himself. And I think that's just so natural. I mean, what do you think are some of the areas that, that lead us to that? Is it, I mean, obviously there's a lot of these are just emotional reactions that we're having, but how do you think that, um, you know, what would be something that you would say are ways that right. if we're not in that moment, what could we be doing now to prepare yes. for that potential moment of that happening? Yes, absolutely. And you know what? I, um, I certainly, what I, the answer to that, how I would answer that is it, it all, I think, and we're all guilty of it. I think it's some form or another. It goes back to our expectations of our life in this world, you know, mm. and I, of course, I know that, of course, that must have been very difficult for you to go in and, and have that conversation. And, and I don't mm. know that he would have been ready to hear what I'm, what right. I'm about to say right. at that right. moment. I mean, right. It just, just let him, his feelings are valid and, and he's right. allowed to right. have, those, those, you know, but, um, and I don't know, you know, many of us very subtly fall into this mindset where, uh, you know, th this is it, th this is the kingdom of God, you know, and that my life in this world, uh, if I do the right thing is going to be smooth sailing a little bit. Mm. But, um, you know, Christ, I, I always remember in, in the Last Supper, mm -hmm. as he was kind of giving his farewell words to the disciples, he said, these words I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Mm. And I think we forget those words that he said, you know, these words I've spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. In other words, mm. it's going to be a rough ride. Mm. And so God never told us, Christ never said that our life in this world was going to be smooth and easy. We live in a fallen world where mm. there's sickness, there's death, there's abuse, there's trauma. There's all these these ugly things. There's a lot of beauty in this world, but there's profound. I mean, this is a fallen world uh, that we live in. But yet, having heard those words from Christ, it's we. It's almost as though we unconsciously mm -hmm. develop expectations mm -hmm. for our life in this world, or even mm -hmm. anticipations of our life in this world mm -hmm. that are not based on anything Christ said. Mm -hmm. You know, almost as though we're expecting the kingdom of God now. We want it right. now. Right. You know, we want it here. And if we can just master that concept of what Christ told the disciples, that, mm. you know, in the world you will, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. In other words, he didn't abandon us. Right. You know, right. so there is no place where God is not, and that whatever mm. suffering we go through in this world is not going to be our defining moment, right? As St. As Paul said, what no ear has not heard, nor eye seen, nor heart conceived what God mm. has prepared for those that love him. So Absolutely. the joy of being in the presence of God will trump any suffering we went through in this world. And yet somehow all of us, we miss that and we develop these almost strange expectations that all right, if I just do everything right, my life is going to be smooth and easy. And then when what Christ said in the world, you're going to have tribulation. When that tribulation happens, we mm -hmm. feel abandoned and we're in a spiritual crisis because we say this wasn't supposed to happen. But but where did Christ say that? He never right. said it was going to be an easy ride. Right, 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 you know? right. right. So. In fact, he tells us to take up our cross. That that you know, he's actually revealing to us that it is going to be difficult. And um, I just would caution, you know, I, I think that's just one of those things that, you know, remember that show GI Joe back in the day. Just say at the very oh, yeah. end, it would say, "And knowing is half the battle." You know, <laughs> we just need to be aware that this is something that's a reality that we're going to face. And I think knowing that and ex and doing all that we can to prepare ourselves, but remembering what you beautifully stated in, in the Gospel of John when he talks about the fact that, you know, stand, you know, be of good cheer, um, because that peace is not found in this world, but that's right. found in Christ. Um, I do invite all of you to, if you are willing and wanting to talk to Father Joshua, we're talking about just how do we deal with the different dark seasons that we face in our life. And maybe as you're hearing us tonight or watching us tonight, you too are going through a difficult and dark season. Don't journey with this alone. You can, you're can you more than welcome to call us. You could totally be anonymous. That number is 1-855-237-2346. 1-855-237-2346. Or you can email me a question at ask at ancientfaith.com. That's ask at ancientfaith.com. Father Joshua, I just heard from our producer that we have uh, a caller. Um, welcome to Live with the Lowe's. 
Hello. Yes, Hello. welcome. Hi, 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 Father. How are you? Uh, Doing well. I just Thank you. Passing for a very, I don't know how to start. I passing right now. I I calling from South Florida right now. I live here in South Florida. I passing for a very dark moment. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I want to see the, say this is. I think it's God calling me back. You know, uh, because I was working in 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 in, in, in the developing of the app developing of uh, entrepreneurship and, and, you know, like same as Uber and Lyft. Unfortunately, uh, all year that I spending of work and, and spending uh, funds, money, time, hard working, unfortunately, it's not going to make it mm. for many reasons out of my control. I don't want to be, I don't want to be in detail right now because I know it's a short time that I have, you know, I don't want, you know, mm-hmm. to be extended, but for me, it's a very heartbreaking moment that I'm passing right now. It's a moment of grief because all the efforts that I spent, money, time, uh, it's, it drained to the, to, to the sewer. Mm. You know, yeah, I feel so depressed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that moment, I, I kneel, my, I, kneel my, my, I bow my head to God to say, you know what? Help me. I can do mm-hmm. it alone. Help me. That's only I have to say at this moment, you know, because it's hard. It's hard. I'm so sorry you're going through all this. So sorry. Brother Joshua, Joshua, can you address um, what our caller is talking about? Yes, and if I might ask to the caller, I'm sorry, I missed your name in the beginning. I think he's choosing to be anonymous, um, Father Anonymous, okay, very good. So I forgive me then for not uh, calling you by your name. I... Uh, if, if you can remind me, so this thing you were developing that you had spent so much time and, and energy and, and, and resources on, uh, is that what you were developing something you were working on? I was developing in an app. An app, okay, very good. Okay. To, 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 develop, to, to develop apps, to the regular app that we have in the market, you yes. know, like Uber and Lyft. Uh, sure. Sorry, my and my I, ac- sorry, my accent. <laughs> it's no, no, I understand. Fine. No, all I needed to know was uh, was what it was you, that you were. I just want to make sure I didn't mishear or misunderstand you. So I, uh, yeah. first, I, I just your feelings are mm-hmm. are very proportionate. So mm-hmm. everything is very reasonable that you're feeling right now, and um, and mm-hmm. obviously, you know, you had, an, had a lot of hope and uh, a, a lot of future based on this this app which is for some people an app might seem like a small thing but it's actually it's a huge thing these apps that we use and um it, it makes total sense to me and your feelings are your feelings and so if, if indeed it's not going to work out and as you said this it's it's not going to come to fruition uh, you have every right to grieve this loss i mean yeah it's my it's, it's all it's my all year of effort and, and work you mm-hmm. know and thanks god you know and I, I decided to come back to church i i do my confession and being a while to go to church since the pandemic i don't i don't i don't went to church and you know and i if i you know i only watch online but not so often i be i was a kind of distant from the church life and 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 christian life what how are you call you know, I just mm. call. I call my spiritual father. Say, listen, I I need I need to confess. You know, sometimes I believe in this thing. Things happen for a reason, and sometimes God calls us in a very strange way. So I see that that that, that clear statement to say, hey, I tried to speak to you for for almost more than a year, mm. and you don't listen to me. You, you, uh, you, you, you take me for granted. Uh, you know, I give you the blessing for all the opportunities of, of, of your project, mm-hmm. and they all, they, and you never take me thanks for this. You never. Let me me, uh, let, let me get let me get Father Joshua to answer those comments because we've got a lot of people actually calling. I love the fact that you're sharing what you're sharing. Um, as a caller, I know that what you're sharing is from your heart, and I want you to know that as we hear you, you know, we're praying for you because. It sounds like you're under in a tremendous amount of stress and heartache. You know, Father Joshua, I think we were talking about this a little bit earlier, is that sometimes we can feel like maybe God is trying to get our attention, or that God is um, maybe punishing us or reminding us of what we need, of, of, 
of his desire to have us in his in our life what, what would you say to what our caller is saying um with regards to that okay you know i would say uh grieve this out you have every right to grieve uh th this loss out and you know when we look at some of the most successful people uh, out there in the world within the church outside of the church uh, president mm -hmm. abraham lincoln whoever you want to go some of the, they they all suffered profound failures and losses in their mm -hmm. life and defeats and as their life went on, they would they would never have had it be any different. Um, those defeats and those losses and those failures uh, made them the wise people. That suffering made them very wise and resilient, mm -hmm. and they never would give that up for anything. And I know it's hard for you to believe now uh, that the time will come in the future where you might look back on this this the failure of the app, not your failure, okay? But maybe the app didn't work out. And say, you know what, that was the greatest thing that could ever happen to me. But I have little doubt that in your future, you will one day look back and say, yes, thank God I learned so much from that experience. And that there's better things ahead. And that if, it, you know, I don't know enough about the project you were working on, but if indeed there was something about it that God felt, you know, maybe this isn't for you or this isn't going to be good for you spiritually. Uh, and I have to close this door. You, we have to trust his providence that a new door will mm. open. We just mm. have to be patient and trust. And I know that's very hard. But in the meantime, you're allowed to be angry. You're allowed to be upset and you're allowed to grieve. But just hold on to that hope that you have not been abandoned and that God has another opportunity for you. We just have to exercise that patience and pray and discern and wait for that next door to open. Um, and then it is precisely then you will look back and say, yes, now I know why that happened. And that's going to, you're going to grow spiritually by uh, uh, great lengths at that, at that moment. You see, so uh, God bless good, you. That, so good, that's, good advice. Thanks so much, Father Joshua. And thanks so much uh, for calling. We appreciate that. Uh, Father Joshua, we have another um, emailer that just uh, emailed us a statement. Uh, we're getting a lot of these that are just prayers. People are asking for us to pray for them. But in this particular one, there's a, the comment is, is, um, Father Joshua, I would love to hear how to deal with a current traumatic experience like cancer, which causes me daily stress. These stresses inhibit you to in, inhibit me to move forward and to heal. Can we talk a little bit about that? Yes. Um, so basically how to handle the trauma of the, the diagnosis and mm -hmm. uh, that's what it seems uh, like. And is. the cancer, and, and, and uh, I know because it's an email, I can't, of course, ask questions and just find sure. out more information. But, uh, you know, I just, you know, I feel a bit hypocritical um, answering the, the, the submitter of the question, answering their question, because I have not walked in their shoes. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, so I, right. I feel uh, ill-equipped and a bit hypocritical in answering the question. But I will say what I have seen work for people is that after that initial shock and the grieving and, and all, and you, you're entitled and you're allowed to have, to run the full gamut of emotions there, but to know, um, and, 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 and inevitably we come to peace with our own powerlessness and all of this, mm -hmm. but that you have purpose and you have a role to play and that people can better navigate this process that you're going through when they, hold on to that conviction that they can still, uh, you still have a role to play, even through your treatments, through mm -hmm. the pain, whether it's going to that, that, that the, the support group uh, and being a role model uh, for others and offering comfort to others. And so even though you might not feel it, uh, whether it's emotionally, and, and of course I realize you might not feel it physically at times, mm -hmm. uh, but it's very important that you rediscover uh, your new life in what might seem like this this loss of health okay and that there is still a role and a ministry for you to play because your very illness has now brought you into contact with others who are suffering and mm. there might be a new calling uh, waiting for you now and, and a new role for you to play um, but you know this you know to answer and to give you the more obvious answers you know with this it is a trauma and, mm. you know, it, it's a trauma because we're experiencing a loss of control, our own powerlessness and our our mortality uh, is being threatened. Uh, indeed, as each one of ours is right. where we are all the reality is we are all terminal. Even those of mm. us who are walking this earth thinking we're healthy. We are terminal simply due to age. Mm. Um, and so 
but it's very important. Um, what's going to help you the most is to not restrict yourself to your reactions. You're allowed to react and have whatever emotions you want, and you're allowed to cry and you're allowed to be angry. And because the sooner you accept those emotions and you allow yourself them, the sooner you're going to find yourself on the other side of that dark stage. Father Joshua, exactly. if I could just uh, make a, if I can just add to that, because I think so many people, when they hear you say that, they, that maybe some of them feel a sense of freedom, but we've often been told, you know, not to cry, not to allow, you know, or or sometimes you can even get comments that, you know, um, you know, where's your faith in this? Why aren't you putting more faith in God? If you put more faith in God, you would not need to be emotional, or um, or that um, the more you're crying, that it's going to lead to some sort of even darker um uh you know um emotional um uh, you know uh, lifestyle um, for lack of a better expression i mean you know wh why is it so important i guess that 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 purging of or that that allowing yourself to release what's on the inside of you why is that so important um for our listeners to do when they're experiencing that trauma because the, there's an old that old adage uh, the only way out is through See, and that's the great paradox or irony with our emotions. The more we try to shut them down and the more we try to avoid them, the more they are going to linger and grow in strength. Mm -hmm. So the only way out is through and through by practicing self-compassion and self-acceptance and saying, this is how I feel mm -hmm. and these are my feelings and that's okay. And I'm going to allow myself this. I'm going to allow myself this bad day. I'm going to allow myself this grief. And I'm going to allow myself this anger and the asking of the why questions. Mm. And the more we show self-compassion and we allow ourselves that, rather than lecturing ourselves saying, well, you know, but others have it worse and I should just be grateful. Mm. Okay, you'll get to that mm. point. But you might not be there yet. And the more that we allow ourselves those emotions is the faster we're going to come out on the other side and say, all right, <clears throat> I think I'm done with this stage. Mm. Now, what can I do? that gives me purpose and makes me feel productive. And suddenly we begin to re-engage life because in the early days or weeks or months of the diagnosis, it's shock. Our life mm. has been dis dis uh, derailed and we, are, we often are not engaging life anymore. Mm. And we're allowed to go through that. And there's no timetable on it, but eventually sure. um, we come out on the other side of those emotions by allowing ourselves them. And then we're ready to engage life with more resilience and hope um, it's kind of a death and resurrection, even, mm. uh, that we all go throughout our life. Uh, the dying part is the coming to terms and, and all the, the dark emotions and so forth. But then by accepting that stage is when we then emerge a, diff a new person, right. uh, much stronger, more resilient, wiser, and with a little more energy to go maybe be a role model to others going through the same mm. thing, you know, in those groups and so forth, the support groups. And, and there's like a second life waiting for us, you see. Um, but, um, but yes, you should treat this uh, like any other traumatic experience and mm. uh, to, to, to talk about it. And, um, you know, I, I, again, I don't want to go too far in my answer, but you've heard me on, maybe on the podcast talk a little bit about EMDR. That mm -hmm. is used to treat situations like this. Can and, we talk uh, about that real quick, uh, Father Joshua? Just explain yeah. what that is to our audience. Yes, uh, EMDR, uh, it's, it's nothing hokey pokey. It's, it's mainstream trauma treatment. Uh, the VA mm -hmm. system uses it with veterans. Mm -hmm. um, it stands for Eye Movement Desensitization Reprocessing. Uh, and decades ago, a uh, psychologist discovered that if somebody is pondering or has an image or memory in their mind of something painful or stressful, and they move, uh, they engage in uh, a structured moving of eyes back and forth, that it activates uh, a, re a rapid processing in the brain that enables us to put traumatic memories and experiences in a past narrative mm -hmm. so they're not so disruptive in the present. And that's really it in a nutshell. There's a lot sure. to it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so it can be used to treat traumatic health diagnoses. Or if somebody's getting cancer treatments, uh, EMDR can be used to help them move through the emotional stages of it a little faster. And it lessens anxiety. Um, and it, it, it's been documented to work very well in these situations. So, you know, it, it is a traumatic experience and you were right to use the word traumatic for that. Um, mm -hmm. So I would answer it in the same way I would answer any other uh, traumatic experience. 
you know, and so. I love that. I think your the wisdom that you're providing our listeners tonight is just so powerful, Father Joshua. I really appreciate it. You're listening to Live with the Lows, and tonight we're speaking on the topic of how do we deal with the dark seasons that we all go through in life. Our dear friend, Father Joshua McCool, who has a podcast here on Ancient Faith called Healing the Unresolved, Putting the Past in the Past, and also the author of two books published by Ancient Faith called Healing Your Wounded Soul, Growing from Pain to Peace, and Healing Work, Giving Humanity a Second Chance, are books that you can find here at the Ancient Faith Bookstore. Just go to store.ancientfaith.com. But we'd love to hear from you. We know that there are many of you that are listening tonight that are going through a dark season or may know someone who is going through a dark season. Feel free to call us at 1-855-237-2346, 1-855-237-2346, or email us a question at ask at ancientfaith.com. That's A-S-K at ancientfaith.com. And I do want to just share this with our listeners and viewers this evening that please, you know, we, we do this show because, you know, Roxanne and I really feel adamant and really passionate about trying to make a difference in this world, especially on dealing with the very difficult topics that we cover on our show. We cover topics that deal with uh, sometimes topics that we just don't want to talk about, dealing with loneliness and depression, darkness. And we share this with you, but we don't want this to be a replacement for you getting true counseling, uh, reaching out to your parish priest, asking them, him or her, you know, asking him for his guidance in this, or for that matter, seeking professional help through a counselor or therapist. Um, I just we want you to know all that that we want to be a tool for you, but we just don't want uh, you to take the take uh, just simply try to leave it into a snap it a uh, snapshot of what we're sharing with you on a show. Definitely get the help that we that you're needed. Those resources that are out there to be helpful. Um, Father Joshua, we received this email question just a few moments ago, and it's a very difficult question. I will tell you that, um, but it's a question I think that. Parts of it I think we can answer or address at least in some small way. This is a question. This is an anonymous emailer. Uh, they say this, My child has come out recently as a transgendered, and I feel deeply ashamed and something that could be akin to a death. I struggle with wanting to remain an Orthodox Christian because of how much our faith, uh, our faith hates, and her, these are their words, people who are gay, or non-gender conforming, and consequently those who are orthodox treat those who struggle as pariahs. I can't tell you, as a parent, I did not want this. Obviously, the topic of transgender is a topic that we're hearing much more in the world today, but I think the, the bigger um, question that we may be able to resolve within the time that we have on our show is maybe just dealing with things when we're dealing with things that are really out of our control. You know, a, a child that makes a, um, that's, uh, makes a decision um, that we may not uh, necessarily be comfortable with or, or necessarily agree with, um, as this person, is, as this parent is putting, I didn't want this. How do we get through those dark seasons when the situation is not going to get resolved? Um, how do we navigate through that? How do we come to that level of peace that we've been talking about earlier? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so... Uh... To, to speak to how you summarize it uh, at the end there, Father Nick, more generally, you know, uh, we, we don't know the outcome of, of these types of things. And no matter what our children do, behaviorally, whatever it might be, um, we, we, we remember the example of, of the prodigal son. And then, and, and again, whether it's addiction or no matter what it might be, and no matter what they do that we we're so uncomfortable with or what we don't like, um, as I said recently to someone who, who, whose child was struggling with, with something similar, I said, you know, you have to keep the runway clear for them because you never know when they're going to come back in for a landing. And mm. um, our children are young. The teenagers are young. The, the prefrontal cortex of their brain that plays a role in decision making is still forming. And it's such a confusing and traumatic time, adolescence, mm. especially these days. So this is what they're going through now. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's where go they're going to be five or 10 or 15 years from now. So to simplify it and to give a very self-evident answer, forgive my answer for being very self-evident, is we don't do anything. We, we don't get into power struggles with them because that's not going to do anything. It's just going to create more hurt. And we don't mm. want to add more energy to the situation. So we love them. Uh, we love them, mm. and 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 it's okay if they sense our feelings about things. But 
are their home is still their home and mm -hmm. um they still have a place at the table and we are not going to suddenly start to strip things away from them and punish them or shame them because mm -hmm. they have now taken a path we don't uh, agree with mm -hmm. and we don't do that that's not godly and I, I think many christians out there have some misconceptions about how to handle these situations mm -hmm. you see we keep them close and we love them and not, nothing really changes in that regard and we you know when we pray every day and throughout the day we weave this into our prayer life and 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 put it into god's hands but with regards to what we should do with our child we love them uh, love is unconditional throughout the gospels mm -hmm. christ showed uncondi the unconditional love of god and it's okay right. if they know that hey this isn't our way right this Absolutely. is what we're comfortable with we, it's right. okay to let them know that and we do have to set boundaries at times if things get out of control or over the top but do not throw debris in the runway through hurtful mm -hmm. actions that could prevent them from coming back in for a landing again to the life they had and many parents get upset and frustrated and they they clutter that proverbial runway that their kid is going to need to come back with hurtful exactly. words and actions that burn bridges and make it impossible for their kid to come back and um so don't That's put too such much powerful pressure. such yeah. powerful advice uh father joshua I, I love hearing that that don't clutter the runway that we need to be a safe place for our children to land yeah. and um love love hearing that that's powerful um was, we thank that emailer uh, for sharing that and please feel free we'll have father joshua on the call um, on a show in the future and please follow up if you'd like to we do have a caller anna welcome to live with the lows hi hi how are you anna um not great <laughs> to be truthful mm. um i just wanted to call and ask is it ever possible to find peace in this life? I mean, um, I have bipolar. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of past trauma issues that I'm I'm dealing with with my therapist. Um, you know, but I, I read a lot about orthodoxy. You know, I am orthodox. You know, I'm I'm a convert. Many years I mm -hmm. watch YouTube a lot, and you know the 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 saints and the elders all talk about peace you know and having peace of soul and how do you find that mm. how, how do you find that kind of peace when you know when you go through when medications don't always work and you right. keep going up and down and you, you go through these periods of just you know so much pain and and you can't, I can't even pray and uh, it's mm. like how do how do I find that peace do I ever find that peace and I just don't know. You know Anna, I, just... I, I, I want you to know that I'm so grateful that you picked up the call, uh, picked up the phone and called us um, tonight. And I just want you to know that um, I definitely will have Father Joshua respond to this, but just know that you're not alone and that we are going to be praying for you. Um, and all of our listeners, I just encourage you that um, to know that when we get off this show tonight, as we do with all of our shows, to be quite honest with you, we just pray for all those that were listening. And so, Anna, just know that you're not alone. I just want you to know that you're not alone, that we are praying with you and for you. But Father Joshua, to her point, I mean, I hear that question. I'm sure you, in your role as a therapist and as a parish priest, I mean, how often do we hear people saying, how do I get that peace? How do I, how do I experience that? Can we kind of, uh, in the, I know we don't have much time left in the show, but at least kind of guide um, Anna on this, um, on this path to better understanding yes. what that peace looks like and where that peace comes from. Yes, I... Uh... Anna, I'll, I'll, I just I want to refrain from from asking you more questions, you know, publicly on radio, perhaps with with many others listening. So I will speak to what I suspect you might be struggling with, and uh, and please forgive me if I misspeak at all, or if, if I'm not speaking to the right thing. I I just want to say that I think one of the things that would be really good for you to work on uh, with your therapist is self compassion, and and to mm. really take it easy on yourself and. You know, it's not your fault that you you struggle with with bipolar disorder. It's and and it's not your fault that you had trauma. You know, and and it doesn't mean anything negative about you. And and you're allowed to be upset about these things. And and just to have more compassion on yourself. 
and to really pay close attention to how you relate with yourself and your quiet moments, like how you feel about yourself that you have depressive episodes or that you have times where your energy's high and then and then the trauma and all the shame and the confusion that comes mm -hmm. with that, um, that to just, it's not your fault. And to really in your quiet moments, to pay attention to how you relate with yourself and how we talk to ourselves with our thoughts and tell yourself, you know, none of this is my fault. And it doesn't mean anything negative about me. And, you know, one of the things I wanted to say that could really speak to all the questions is that there's often a belief operating during our dark times that makes us suffer the most. And that belief is when we believe that something means something negative about me, about us. And so, mm -hmm. so many of these experiences, we could say, listen, this is something that I'm experiencing. And this is something that's happening to me. But it doesn't mean anything about me. You mm. see? And it's when we believe a situation means something negative about me that it causes us to obsess about it, to ruminate about it, and to be mm. unable to let it go. And the moment we can move to that place where it's like, listen, I, I, this is, yes, I, I'm experiencing this and it happened to me. But it doesn't mean anything negative about me. Mm. We're much easier, it's much easier for us to move into that acceptance stage and to actually feel the first inkling of peace a little bit because you didn't do anything wrong and you don't have to prove anything, you know? And I, that, I know you made reference to the fact that there's trauma there, which means it's something big. Mm -hmm. And so I, I you know, I, I don't want to, uh, uh, you know, so I, I would leave the rest for your therapist, but, mm -hmm. but maybe you can request that in your sessions to say, I think I need more self-compassion. I think I, I need to stop feeling shame because I'm going through this or believing it means something negative about me because it's not your fault. You didn't do anything I, wrong. You know? I think that is so, I, I, I love hearing that phrase of self-compassion. I think so often we're the last people to take care of when we're going through those difficult times. Anna, thank you so much for calling us and rest assured of our prayers with you. And um, just know that, like I mentioned earlier, that you're not alone. I think the words of Father Joshua are just beautiful and and i encourage you to share that with your with your therapist um and just stay close to your parish priest as well lean into him as well but thanks so much for calling um father joshua we also have another question this is a youtube question that came in it says um aren't most if not all of these dark seasons in life a result of a fear of death <clears throat> interesting you know that's a that's a deep discussion that's an excellent mm -hmm. question and, um, you know, one could probably make that argument, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think that's, you know, I, I think I was actually ruminating on that several months ago, but I never finished answering the question to myself. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, you know, I, let me say this, uh, certainly n not all of our dark seasons are a fear of death, but probably many of them are. For example, let's say, um, somebody struggles with a difficult life stage transition, you know, uh, retirement or uh, the empty nest or kids going off to college mm. or something. Some people celebrate at that stage of life mm. and others mourn and grieve. It's a wide spectrum of responses we have to that. One mm. could argue that if we're struggling with that, that in the end, it, it, there is a fear of death operating. It means we're getting older and, and that time is progressing. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but then again, it, it, not always. You know, it, it, so I would have to say not all of the dark seasons of our life are from a fear of death, but probably a good many of them are. Uh, many of them are just dark seasons because it's reminding us of uh, a traumatic experience earlier in our life or a previous what, dark season. Right. That, that I think that's what I was going to I, I was going to add to that. Uh, as far as I, you know, that, that's, it, it almost feeds a narrative that we have or a previous struggle that we may have dealt with that um, kind of picks at that scab again. Sometimes that when we go through that. Um, but I, I think that's it's so powerful to see just the power of how we process our brain process uh, is trauma, um, and you know how every one of us experience it in different ways. But I think one thing we've heard tonight um, is just the sheer amount of need of people to know that um, of allowing yourself to be. It's okay to take care. It's a, it's okay to to weep and to um, go through that season of allowing yourself to. Um, allow yourself to be compassionate towards yourself. 
Um, so powerful what you're sharing. I know we only have a few minutes left, um, Father Joshua, but I did want to just ask that you know the questions of you know can we learn to see how our own powerlessness as an ally and help rather than a dreaded foe? I mean, how can our own powerlessness be an ally for us? Uh, many of us may have observed that it's precisely when we stopped fighting and trying sometimes that all of a sudden we find peace and that our mm. things start to work out. And, you know, sometimes we put God in a bind. Uh, when, a, when a dark season arises in our life and we're really feeling powerless, we tend to go into over-functioning mode where we're, we drive ourselves crazy. We exhaust ourselves trying to fix the situation. I'm, I'm over-controlling. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. Mm-hmm. And while we're doing that, we're throwing prayers up to God saying, Lord, please help me with this situation. Please grant me this outcome. But then as soon as the prayer is done, we go right back to doing whatever we're doing and over-functioning. And so right. then God, I suspect God looks at us and says, man, you know, I love them and I, I want to help them. But if I give them this thing, mm. it's going to reinforce their over-functioning and that they have this control. So what do we do? You see, we don't step away to uh, let God work in that space of powerlessness because it's in our own powerlessness. It's in that space where miracles happen. And some people might say, okay, Father, I hear you, but okay, but I have a need. I'm stressed and I understand God thinks it might reinforce my overfunctioning if he answers my prayer while I'm controlling too much. But can he just help me out this one time? Mm. And then I would say, you know what? it would be hurting us. God would be inflicting harm on us. Why? Because we're not meant to be God. And so when God sees us over controlling and trying to control the uncontrollable in our life and managing the unmanageable and trying to do too much and not Mm -hmm. stepping back and confronting that powerlessness and being at peace and filling that powerlessness with prayer and waiting for God to fill it, okay, because we're in that space trying to control everything. If we, if God answers our prayer in that situation, which he very well could and might, he can do whatever he wants to, though, mm-hmm. it could destroy us because it reinforces that we can, that we have this power, that we can right. control the uncontrollable, manage the unmanageable, which takes a toll on our health. We're not meant uh, to be so powerful all the time, you see, and it's mm-hmm. in the moments of our own powerlessness where God can act. So let's not be too quick to fill it. And to try to mm. wipe it out, mm-hmm. make peace with powerlessness, because that's where opportunities mm. for God to do his thing lies. That's where miracles happen in that space of powerlessness. And, um, and there's great that. beauty to be seen there. That it's, it's, it's precisely when you say, you know what, I'm going to get out of the way so God can act. I'm going to step back. I've done what I can. I've done the responsible things. And now I'm just going to pray and wait. And when God sees, all right, they're out of the way. So now if I do something, it'll be clear that the power was from me and not from them, right? Mm. And so God's strength is made perfect in our weakness, as the scripture says, right? So that, Mm. you know, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the power might be from God and not from us. So we have to be weak and we have to be powerless so that God can so effectively do his thing, these miracles in Mm. our lives. So don't be afraid of powerlessness, you know? Right. I, th- I just love what you're sharing. Father, we, we only have probably about, I don't know, about two minutes. And I, I definitely want to just get to this question if we can before you leave it. I know it won't do it much service to as far as the, the, the brevity of the, of the, of the question. Um, but I did, the, the, you know, we talked about self-compassion. Uh, you know, tell us, you know, the, the, the difference between self-indulgence and healthy self-care. I mean, it, it, you know, help us with that. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of confusion between the two, especially among Orthodox Christians. And so because it's because of our fear of the former, of self-indulgence, that we end up neglecting the latter, right. self-care, you see. And so extremes don't work, you see. And so uh, self-indulgence is when, of course, obviously we're, it's self-destructive behavior. We're doing, mm. we're trying to comfort ourselves in ways that don't make us feel good. But self-care is not self-indulgence. Doing something for ourselves is not self-indulgence. You know, Father Thomas Hopko speaks about this all the time, you know? And so if we have a phobia, too strong a fear of self-indulgence, in order to cope with that, we end up neglecting self-care, which creates the very thing we're trying to avoid. Right. You see? So self-care means we're simply refilling our tank. 
especially if we're doing what we're supposed to be doing in the Christian life and we're giving and giving to others, at some point it's okay to withdraw and do something for ourselves. You know, mm. maybe it's a wholesome hobby. Maybe it's uh, taking some time for ourselves or a trip or, or an activity or something, and even stepping away from our family so that we can be mm. a better mother or father when we return. And so self-care is not unchristian and it's not selfish. And, uh, you know, if we don't engage in that self-care, uh, we will weaken ourselves, which will then predispose us to being self-indulgent. Exactly. Because we create such an extreme, we go to an extreme to correct it. Mm -hmm. So, Exactly. I love, love, love what you're sharing, brother. Thank you, Father Joshua, so much for taking the time uh, to be with us this evening. I do encourage you, just, just as a reminder to all of our viewers and listeners this evening, you can find out more about Father Joshua. He has a podcast called Healing the Unresolved, Putting the Past in the Past. It's a podcast right here on Ancient Faith Radio. You definitely have to check out his books. They're Healing Your Wounded Soul, Growing from Pain to Peace. And also the other book is Healing Work, Giving Humanity a Second Chance. These are both great, great books. We'll definitely have Father Joshua. I know there was a many other emails and uh, calls that we were not able to get to in our show, but definitely we'll definitely get those to the, in our next show when we have Father Joshua back. But thank you so much, brother, for being with us uh, this evening and just really shedding some light, giving us all some really great tools that we can utilize when we go through those difficult seasons of life. So thanks for being with us. No, it was my pleasure. It was my privilege. So thank you. Yeah. Absolutely, brother. And to Matushka Trudy, we thank her so much. She's the producer of our show, as she does every single Tuesday evening. Thanks to Matushka Trudy for producing tonight's show. And to all of you, I, I encourage you all, um, just know that we're praying for you and that we are here for you. And if you're just looking for just even daily words of encouragement, as I mentioned at the top of the show, go to our website at thelows.com forward slash subscribe. Just simply subscribe to receiving our daily inspirational messages. Next week, we're going to be speaking with Steve Christoforo on a ministry called Focus. It's an extraordinary ministry that's really transforming so many people's lives around our country. We look forward to having you on and with us next Tuesday at 8 p.m. right here on Ancient Faith Radio. God bless you all, my friends, and stay strong in your walk of faith. Father Nick and Dr. Roxanne are the authors of the book Renewing You, a priest, a psychologist, and a plan which can be purchased at store.ancientfaith.com. Their daily inspirational messages can be found at thelows.com slash subscribe. Be sure also to search for The Lowe's on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Live with The Lowe's is a listener-supported presentation of Ancient Faith Radio.